So hello everyone, I'm Thierry from Orange. As you can see, I'm very proud to be Orange. And uh, I'm here today with Mathieu from SNCF to talk about uh, a real testimonial uh, from the field of something we did in the past few months. And uh, we are really glad to be there today to share with you what, uh, what we did ourselves plus uh, multiple companies. Um, many of you know that uh, four weeks ago, Orange launched a new network for IoT, uh, which is called LTEM. So it's a special version of the LTE that we all use today. Uh, LTE is 4G, basically. And uh, so it's dedicated to IoT. And here we are going to talk about uh, IoT services, IoT solutions. And as we are working with SNCF Group for many years uh, now, I'm really glad to, uh, to welcome uh, Mathieu, Mathieu Belloir, who is in charge of uh, the uh, telecom innovation at SNCF, uh, to talk about the real pain points, the real use cases that SNCF has on the field. Mathieu. Hello, everyone. So, yes, I'm uh, Mathieu uh, Belloir, so working for um, ESNCF, actually, which is uh, an entity dedicated to uh, digital solutions. And actually using sensors for SNCF is quite a long story because it's even part of our legacy systems to um, monitor the whole railway uh, system. And you see a few of the, of the pains that we, uh, we, we have and why we are using uh, sensors to, to solve those, uh, those pains. But actually uh, we thought with uh, Thierry and Orange um, to all other kind of, uh, of problems, and especially when you think about SNCF, it was within the stations, so we interrogated our, uh, our staff uh, to be able to uh, see what was the what were the the, pay, the pain points uh, that we could uh, detect in stations, and we had a lot of feedbacks um, about uh, safety issues that we have at night with some uh, isolated uh, agents or workers uh, in the, in the station, and also some other stuff uh, related to services, such as um, they wanted to uh, have a very precise and real time. Uh, counting of uh, persons uh, sitting in the in the waiting rooms. So we had uh, some uh, 10 to 15 uh, cases, and we narrowed them to to, to three ones. Um, but uh, SNCF, of course, uh, it's uh, also um, uh, 30,000 kilometers of tracks uh, with with trains. So we have a, a, a lot of uh, cases and uh, IoT cases around tunnels. And uh, when we ne interrogated our uh, staff about, uh, about that, we had a lot of feedbacks on uh, tunnel management, and especially, um, how was it possible to uh, monitor the formation of calcite in the gutters along the tracks? Uh, was it possible to uh, monitor the uh, light, lightning level uh, in the tunnels? Uh, was it possible to monitor the air toxicity in the tunnels for safety reasons? A lot of, uh, a lot of cases, and we will focus on, uh, on a few ones later. And the last um, area on which we, uh, we, we focused our efforts uh, was for the Technicentre, uh, which are the, um, the factories, the big factories in which uh, we are um, making the maintenance and we are repairing uh, our trains. And uh, actually, we have very big tooling equi equipments uh, that we lose a lot uh, because they are not parked at the right place. And we spent hours and hours searching for those tooling equipments. So we wanted to find an IoT solution, uh, but really dedicated to the uh, location and how could we find very quickly our equipments on those giant factories of several square kilometers. And then, we partnered with Orange. Yes, thank you, Mathieu. So why Orange? So basically, because we've got what it takes uh, with regard to IoT. Uh, basically, we have uh, three things which are absolutely mandatory for every IoT project. First of all, you need chipsets, you need kits, uh, you need connectivity. We have networks, of course, as you know. Uh, what is less known for Orange is we have also many platforms. Uh, for which you can, of course, manage data, manage devices, but also manage events from the field. So basically, um, for the kit, we selected many kits, but this one is, is great because it's open source. 
Uh, it's hardware and software open source with Mongo and Legato, and it's powered by Sierra Wireless uh, Lettuce Chip, uh, which is uh, not only LTEM but also with a 2G uh, uh, fallback. And uh, with regard to uh, LTEM, basically you inherit from everything which is great with LTE, which means uh, the speed, uh, the low latency, uh, the roaming capabilities, uh, everything which is very important uh, for, for many applications. But you have a plus, which is energy management. So uh, with power saving mode and advanced uh, power saving mode, uh, you can really preserve uh, the duration of the batteries for your objects. And this is really key uh, for, for multiple uh, use cases. Um, of course, the indoor coverage is very important. And as you will see with Mathieu, we have uh, many tunnels uh, to uh, take care of. And it's very important to have a, a good coverage as well. Um, what is important to know is uh, the evolution of the networks. So as you can see here, uh, of course, we have the 4G, we have many uh, what we call the low power wide area network uh, services uh, with LoRa, for example, which is an alliance of multiple, uh, multiple partners. And LTM is not going to replace LoRa, it's, it's complementary as you can see, because LoRa is ideal for, uh, for example, smart meters for uh, uh, water metering, but LTM bring much more speed, much more reactivity, and potential uh, for many, many uh, applications. And of course, everything will converge in a few years uh, with the 5G that everyone is talking about. Uh, and uh, it's uh, also very nice to see that uh, we already have some experimentation of the 5G and we are very confident that everything is converging. Um, the third pillar, the third mandatory element you need for every IoT project is a platform, of course. So you need it for device management, for data management, and we have uh, many APIs uh, to connect uh, the suite of Elastic, for example, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and so on, in such a way that you can provide really a, a complete environment. So <clears throat> what is the best way to test uh, everything? Because on paper, it looks great, but we all want it to uh, really verify, check, uh, on the field what's, what's going on. So the, the best way to do it is really to prototype, to let experts uh, from various companies to test those equipments. And uh, what we did uh, with SNCF was uh, a challenge that ended two days ago. And uh, it's a challenge is a kind of hackathon plus plus, if you want. It's, uh, it's really uh, an event, a competition, but uh, we need to make time for the, the companies, for uh, the candidates, and we need to have extra resources to help them from a marketing standpoint, from a technical standpoint. So uh, we, begin, uh, we began sorry, this uh, event uh, early November, and uh, we just ended the, the, the event, and that's why we are going to talk about today. Um, it was very difficult for us to select the project because we had more than uh, 42 selection uh, uh, submitted projects, which were very uh, attractive uh, from various professionals. So we selected 16 teams, and those teams, uh, of course, uh, receive a, a, large, uh, a large amount of, uh, of awards, and uh, Mathieu is going to talk about the awards. We're going to show you, actually, the, the six winners, and especially the three, the three first are the, the, the grand prizes. So the one we thought were really amazing uh, in four weeks of development. So uh, these are very interested uh, prototypes for us. And uh, uh, for some of them, a proof of concept that we will test on the field in a few, in a few weeks. Uh, the first company is called the NeoVG. Uh, they are from uh, from Toulouse, and um, they um, addressed the um, case that I uh, briefly mentioned about safety of uh, our SNCF agents within the within the station at night. And um, they invented this uh, device. Uh, this device that you can see uh, is actually uh, 3D printed uh, for the for the for the moment, but it's uh, really uh, working. Uh, it's connected uh, with uh, LTE. LTE of course, and um, it's uh, wearable, 
uh, that can detect if uh, the, the person is uh, falling or has a problem, but it's also with a button to uh, ask for help as a silent alarm, uh, which is very important when you are facing someone uh, who is uh, attacking you or is uh, aggressive. So this is uh, something that uh, is a silent alarm only to, uh, for, uh, there are two types of, uh, of alarm, and the first one is only to uh, attract the attention of uh, the agents around the person, because they are also leveraging the existing uh, networks of beacons, uh, BLE beacons that we have in the, in the stations. So this was really extremely well thought, uh, extremely well executed uh, in the context of the um, Gare de Lyon, uh, Gare de Lyon Pardieu in, uh, in Lyon, and uh, we were extremely uh, excited by this because this is very close to what we want to achieve, and it goes even further to the demands of the of the staff that we had at the at the beginning. The, this is uh, the, the the best uh, we got from the challenge, and again, it was executed in uh, less than a month. Second one, Adonis, company from uh, from Grenoble. Um, uh, you can see that the prototype is uh, really amazing because uh, it's a tunnel with a, with a train. Um, it was about the de detection of um, the pre presence at the entrance of the tunnels. Um, of course, to detect if it's a human being or uh, animals, uh, because we had a lot of uh, accidents and it costs millions of euros every year because of those uh, incidents. Uh, and also for safety of some uh, some persons. Um, but um, what we thought uh, interested uh, uh, from the IoT uh, standpoint is the fact that they really were able to make a very autonomous device by cascading several sensors uh, to first detect a rough presence of something. It could be a train. And so they listen to the, the, the sound, and they send the sound with the LTEM. So again, low latency, high bandwidth. This was very interesting for us, but very low consumption. And if it's a train, they stop the process. If it's not a train, they trigger a thermal image of the, what, is, uh, what is going on, and they can detect if it's an animal or if it's a human, and again, send only the image and the sound associated to the image uh, for us to uh, lift the doubt about this, uh, this problem. So uh, again, uh, it was very, very intelli intelligently, very smartly thought, and um, they uh, think that uh, this IoT device uh, can uh, last using the, the LTEM network for uh, three to five years, which is something very uh, acceptable for us and very interesting. Inktech, um, they are from Heidelberg in, uh, in, in Germany. Uh, they were working on the um, light level uh, assessment in the, in the tunnels. And uh, it was also very interesting, interesting because um, in addition to uh, this uh, level that we want to monitor, they, um, begin, they began to, uh, to notice some patterns that can be uh, quite easily uh, triggered as uh, alerts with uh, flickering lights or flickering neon lights or even when the train is crossing within the, within the tunnel, and actually it gives us additional information in addition to only this uh, level of lights. So it really uh, unleashed our imagination about what we could do with this very simple and very uh, inexpensive uh, device in our tunnel. And uh, other other companies that um, caught really our our attention uh, in Tessence, uh, in Toulouse, uh, because they were working in detecting the calcite formation in the gutters in the tunnels along the tracks. Very very precise case, but actually very uh, important for for us. And again, something that we can't detect today, um, only by sending uh, people watching the gutters to see if there are calcites or not, and if it's dangerous, because if we've got a flood, it can uh, well flood all the, all the tracks and stop, stop the trains for a few days. So with this, uh, this system, in fact, they work on the, on, on the fact that the conductivity is very different when you have only water or when you have water in addition to calcite, and they detect very uh, in infinitesimal, very small uh, different, different differences of conductivity when those uh, phenomena are, uh, uh, are happening. Uh, 
and uh, we thought it was uh, extremely smart again to uh, to build an IoT device based on those uh, measurements. Innovact, uh, it was about the air toxicity in the tunnels, and in addition to just monitoring the air to toxicity that is that can be done with uh, with a device using very classical uh, IoT uh, systems. Um, they also uh, merge the data from several sensors, not to only measure the level tex uh, the, the air toxicity, but also uh, the engineering system for the extraction of air of the tunnel. And uh, actually, it was something we didn't think to to do, but it was really the right uh, the right thing. And last but not least, the, um, for the station, again, um, we had this uh, daemon to um, just to be able to count how many um, available uh, seats uh, we had in the waiting rooms. And uh, this company, uh, they proposed us a very simple uh, camera, but with the um, s small AI uh, component that is integrated within the camera. So it, it means that we are not sending the images to be treated in the cloud. It's directly within the, 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 the hardware, so it's quite safe. It's uh, GDPR approved, and uh, we can install that in five minutes in any, any stations. Uh, again, LTEM proved that it was the right solution for the, this kind of, uh, of device and services that we want to bring to our customers. So we've learned a lot about uh, this, uh, this uh, challenge, and Thierry yes. will explain that. First of all, I, I would like to say that initially we planned to have only three winners. In fact, we doubled the number of prices uh, given the, the highest level of uh, you know, efficiency and, and proof that uh, uh, the team were demonstrated. So uh, really a great challenge. And of course, we, we confirmed uh, and we proved, even if it was on, uh, as you can see, on the table prototypes, uh, many things which were announced by LTEM, such as uh, the bandwidth, such as the low latency, the bidirectional uh, traffic, uh, which were very important. We still have room for improvement uh, for the power saving modes, uh, and that's why also we partner with SAFT and other companies to make sure that uh, we carefully manage uh, the batteries and we assure five years, as mentioned, uh, Mathieu, or even uh, longer durations. So uh, that's something which is uh, very carefully planned. And the platform capacity is also very good news for us. Uh, it's an opportunity to uh, uh, improve our roadmap in terms of platforms, because now, instead of having just alarms, we have sound, we have images, we have long and huge signals to treat. So this is why, even if it was just a challenge for four weeks, uh, we put in premium mode uh, many, uh, many competitors uh, in such a way we can really cope with uh, the pace and the volume of information. So uh, we solve already uh, many problems, not just uh, for us as, as, a, as a platform, but also for SNCF and for uh, the, the various competitors. And uh, if we move now to the next slide, we see what SNCF will do. Well, it's, qu it's quite obvious because uh, you saw the prototypes and it was, uh, again, a one month uh, work. So uh, now we have to test some of the solutions. Uh, some of them are quite obvious, again, because uh, it was well advanced and it is something that uh, we can already install in a station or along the tracks to make uh, live testing really on site. So uh, proof of concept. Um, but we also have 16 solutions that were brought uh, through the, the competition that we have to review, to assess, and maybe uh, to, uh, to work with a, a few of those uh, companies uh, to really see uh, the, the, the point of doing uh, a pilot uh, with them. And uh, last again but not least, the, the accurate coverage, uh, we have to check that because uh, within the tunnel um, we have 4G because we, uh, we deployed with Orange um, some, uh, some antennas for the, for the 4G, 4G uh, communication for customers taking the trains. And uh, so this is good news for us because uh, everywhere you have 4G, you have LTEM, which is not the case for all the networks and all the IoT networks. And so for us, for our cases within the tunnels, it's, it's great uh, news because we will, we will be able to deploy IoT wherever we have 4G.
So we have to, to, to check that uh, for our pilot and especially uh, to think about the industrial deployment, uh, which, which would be uh, hundreds and even thousands of, uh, of new sensors powered with LTEM. Thank you, Mathieu, and thank you again to all the partners, because apart from SNCF and Orange, uh, we are sponsored by the GSMA, so the uh, GSM Association for all the, the operators. Uh, we'll invite most of the winners uh, in Barcelona. You know, there is a huge event in Barcelona in February, so they will be invited. And uh, also Sierra Wireless for the kids and Ericsson for the network. So again, this is a unique opportunity for many teams to be uh, visible, to be promoted. And uh, we run out of time, but uh, you can uh, go to our orange booth uh, on the ground floor, and I will be happy to, uh, with Mathieu to, to answer your questions. Thank you again.